Hi everyone. We've already dealt with the, you know, the, uh, the different categorizations or different types of business combinations. Uh, and we also discussed the terms, including goodwill, the non-controlling interest, where we also talked about uh, non-controlling interest to be measured at a fair value or a proportion of assets method or under the proportion of net assets method. Right. We also talked about, of course, the initial measurement and subsequent measurement aspects, right? And so far our discussions had been that you are achieving control or you are acquiring a business in one go, right? As if you never had any uh, stake already when you assumed control over the business. So effectively you're talking about something like a 0% to 100% or maybe a 0% a to an 80% or maybe a 0% to let's say a 75%, right? That is something that we had discussed so far in our conversations. But what we won't so now like to discuss is what if the business combination is not achieved in one go, but it's achieved in stages, right? You already have an existing stake in a business, right? It is not a sufficient or enough stake to call it a control, right? It could be a very, very, very little stake, let's say 5% or 10%, as if it's a normal investment in shares of another entity, right? Or it could also be a significant enough stake, could be, let's say, you know, a 35% or a 40%, right? And then you enhance your stake in that business to achieve a control on that business. And that's where you say, the the business combination is achieved in stages right so this particular section we want to talk about how is this existing stake accounted for right how does this entire movement come in from of accounting that is something which is the thought process underneath this particular discussion of business combination achieved in stages right effectively we can say we are moving from a non-control scenario to a control scenario, right? We are moving from a non-control situation to a controlling situation, from a non-controlling stake to a controlling stake, okay? And now you want to remember the day you control, the, the, the day you assume control as well, when you achieve the business combination and and on that date you shall recognize the accounting you shall do the accounting for the goodwill you shall consolidate the net assets of the other entity there's a possibility of not having a hundred percent you know stake in the other business so on the same date you would also be recognizing let's say the non-controlling interest okay but then this would only happen when you have assumed control, okay? Which, which suggests that now you have a control over the 100% of that business, even though you may not be owning 100% shares in that entity. That's what control is all about, by the way, okay? So when we say we are moving from a non-control to a control situation, right? Our existing stake, right? Whatever we had already, was it 10% or 5% or a 35%? We assume that that is de-recognized as if notionally, you haven't done anything about it by the way, but it's assumed that you have notionally sold off that and reacquired that at its fair value. Okay, that is how the accounting treatment is dealt with as far as the business combinations in stages is concerned. Okay, let's try to understand. Let's try to understand this with the help of a small scenario. Okay, let us say there is a company X which has a 10% stake in company Y. Let's say the cost of that stake is rupees five crores, right? So company X shows this investment at five crore rupees and 
and and and continues with with uh, whatever uh, dividend etc received you know to the to the extent of the 10 percent share the company x has got so if y is declaring some dividend of course that is recognized as an income by company x right now it's not a significant stick it's hardly 10 percent there later on company x acquires additional 70 percent stake in the business and on this date it is assumed that the control has been achieved okay earlier it was a non-control scenario or a non-controlling stake but now it is a controlling stake right which is of course initial 10 percent plus additional 70 percent makes it over to total 80 percent of course right now what we are expected to know what we are expected to do at this point in time the day you control is the day you consolidate the day you control is the day you consolidate which means that on this date goodwill will be recognized the net assets of the other entity of the acquiry will be consolidated by the parent company in the group financial statements right and the existing stake which was bought for let's say five crore rupees in this scenario that will be remeasured at its fair value okay right for the sake of argument if i say that the fair value of this amount is let's say 12 crore rupees right essentially we are saying that the total purchase consideration for that 80 percent stake right importantly it's not 70 percent now that is 10 plus 70 right so the purchase consideration for that 80 percent stake will be of course measured at fair value that's what we had been doing throughout that's what we had been doing so far as far as the measurement of goodwill is concerned so what is the fair value of the consideration whatever amount you pay for this 70 percent let's say give it a number let's say it is 60 crores okay so we'll say that the purchase consideration will be 60 crores for that additional 70 percent stake plus the fair value of that existing stake of 10 percent right that is what is going to be the amount to be used for the calculation of goodwill when control has been established right the difference between 5 crores and 12 crores, right? The value of the investment in the books, that is a carrying value, and the market value of that investment, that is a fair value. This difference is reported as a gain. It's clearly a gain, you know, it is the fair value is more than the the carrying value so that will be that will be considered as a profit in the books of company x right because you are remeasuring that investment at its fair value so it would be a realized profit which will be shown by the you know, the acquirer on the day of the uh, you know the the business combination there that is something which is the the concept which is applicable when you move for when you do accounting for the business combination which is acquired in stages right when you move from a non-control to a control scenario you start consolidate right when you control is when you consolidate that's something that you want to remember as a concept right look at the date of that additional stake that is the day when you start consolidating. All right, let's have a look at this scenario. It says that an investor sometimes obtains control of a subsidiary in which it has an equity interest already in place before the date of acquisition. Now, such a transaction is uh, referred to as a business combination achieved in stages or a step acquisition. Now, in such cases, when you look at a, a business combination being achieved in stages, then the parent shall remeasure its existing equity stake right it shall remeasure its 
existing equity stake at the fair value and recognize those gains or losses. It could be a, you know, an increased value of that investment, or it could also be a reduced value, right? So you compare that with the carrying value in the books of the parent versus the fair value of that investment and recognize any gain or losses in the PNL or the OCI as the case may be, right? Now, effectively, this investment, which is there in that, you know, uh, the subsidy, which is now becoming a subsidy, of course, under uh, from a, from a non-control to a control scenario, it is likely that the parent have had the changes in the value of those investments. You know, you would recollect when we talked about the financial instruments, we said that investment in shares is necessarily reported through fair value, now, which could be, you know, through fair value, through profit or loss, or maybe through uh, OCI. And, and normally investment in companies, you know, in the group entities or such kind of, you know, arrangements, normally these investments are measured at the FVOCI or measured through FVOCI, right? Which, which suggests that, right? There could have been earlier changes reported through the other comprehensive income itself, right? If that is the case, the amount that was recognized in the OCI would be recognized on the same basis had it been, had that investment been sold off, right? That's what we said, that it's, it's you, you're practically not selling the investment, right? We talked about that example of a 10% and 70%. So we are saying that if you had a 10% stake already, which is a non-control scenario, and you acquired additional 70% by paying for that 70% as well. The standard suggests that the way you should be reading it, that you effectively disposed of that initial 10% and you reacquired that 10% or in a way you're saying that you now acquired 80% in that, in that company. That's where the control has been, for example, formulated. This is basically the underlying concept of a step acquisition or a business combination achieved in stages, right? So be careful about the date when this step acquisition has been done. And the corresponding figure would simply be what is the value of that investment that you're showing in your books of that, you know, earlier stake? And what is the fair value of that? Right. So the difference between the two has to be reported as a gain or loss as the case may be. All right. Let's have a look at this example. We should be able to validate with the help of numbers in terms of what exactly it indicates. It says that Mojo Limited and Jojo Limited are in chemical industry. Mojo Limited already holds 45% stake in Jojo Limited. Right. It is also mentioned Jojo has been accounted as an associate entity as per India's 28. The carrying value of the interest is two crore rupees, right? It is not a controlling stake. It's a, it's an investment in an associate. The carrying value of that is shown at two crore rupees. Now it says Mojo acquires the remaining 55% interest for 30 crore rupees in exchange of cash, right? So effectively from a 45%, you are moving towards 100%. Right. And when you bring those benchmarking you know, from a 45%, we are referring to a non control scenario. We are calling it to a control scenario. Right. What do we do now? This two crore is not relevant for us anymore. The, the, the investment value of that so called as non controlling stake that was de recognized and that is remeasured at its fair value, which is given at 20 crore rupees. Okay, so effectively we are saying that the overall investment value, right? The overall purchase consideration for the 100% stake is the amount paid for 55% stake, which is 30 crores and the fair value of the 45% stake, which is 20 crores. And that is what becomes your total purchase consideration for this 100% stake in Jojo Limited, right? Now, 
we have provided that the fair value of those identifiable assets and liabilities under this business acquisition is 44 crores, right? Which means that I will reduce that amount. Effectively, we are saying you're paying 50 for a business worth 44, simply resulting into the recognition of a goodwill, right? That's a straightforward, you know, transaction that we do in this case, right? If I were to bring it in an accounting form, in, a, in, a, in the form of a journal entry, we are simply saying debit those net assets. What you control, what you consolidate is 44. Credit the purchase consideration which is of course 30 crores for the additional stake credit the investment in associate right you are de-recognizing that which is two crores all right and credit gain on remeasurement which is 18 crores that is 20 minus 2 okay also importantly you now say that there is an you know uh, there is a goodwill in place of course to the extent of six crore rupees there right at a group level you will be consolidating 44 crores of net assets right your initial investment of two crore rupees is de-recognized from the books. It's not a non-controlling scenario anymore, right? So that has to be canceled out. And then since it is re-measured at its fair value, so the gain, the difference between the two values, the fair value and the carrying value is recognized as a gain at this point in time. And of course, the total consideration for the additional stake is 30 crore rupees. That results into a goodwill of six crores to be recognized by the acquirer here all right let's have a look at the formal solution it says that you would recognize on the acquisition date 100 percent of the identifiable net assets goodwill and those net assets and liabilities under the framework of india's 103 and that's what we have got that the fair value of the consideration transferred is 30 crores, fair value of the previously held interest is 20 crores, and the fair value of the net assets is determined at 44 crores, resulting in a goodwill of 6 crores. The explanation to the, the difference of 18 crores, it is recognized in the income statement because that is how it is meant to be done under a business acquisition achieved in stages or let's say under the step acquisition method all right it's fairly straightforward fairly simple logic right you need to be very very comfortable from an examination standpoint this could be a critical area and can be separately tested in the examination right so be very comfortable about it you all you need to remember you you consolidate when you control Right. You bring goodwill when you control, not before that. Okay, that is what you want to remember from a non-control to a control situation. All right, let's have a look at another example here. It says that on first of April eighteen, Right Limited acquired fifteen percent shares in White Limited for seventy lakh rupees. Right, interesting names. We are saying that this is the non-control scenario where you had the initial investment made for 70 lakh rupees. Now, as on this date, the fair value of white limited's net identifiable assets is two crore rupees and the carrying value of those crores is 1.6, those assets is 1.6 crores, right? Well, it does not really make a difference because it is not a controlling stake, right? It says further, right limited treat this investment as FPOCI as it does not have a significant influence and the fair value of the investment is 1.2 crores, right? Accordingly, Right Limited recognized unrealized gains of 50 lakh rupees. So since you're showing it at under FVOCI, so 
the investment has to be remeasured on the reporting date from 70 lakh rupees to 1.2 crores thereby a gain of 50 lakh rupees should be taken through the oci okay this is something which is a very straightforward information it says now the next day on 1st of april 19 right limited acquired another 65 percent stake thereby obtaining control okay how much has he paid for that is 3.8 crores that includes a premium of let's say 20 lakh rupees right effectively from a 15 percent non-controlling situation to a 80 percent stake becomes a control scenario right moving from a non-control to control okay also it is mentioned as on this date, the fair value of White Limited's net identifiable assets is 2.4 crores, while the carrying value of those assets is 2 crore rupees. Okay. White Limited's profit for the year 2018-19 is 40 lakh rupees. The fair value of the NCI and also of the original investment is given to be 1.2 crores. Okay. The law of information which is provided. The question is compute the amount of goodwill under the business combination under alternative methods to measure the NCI. Right? But remember, the NCI is measured using two approaches. One is you have a proportionate share of net assets, and second is, of course, the fair value. Okay. The fair value is already given to us, which is 1.2 crores. We just need to identify the same in the context of, of course, a proportionate share of the net assets here, right? In, in, I think in either of the scenarios, the only difference in the values is that of the NCI, okay? Because the purchase consideration, the fair value of the net assets, and let's say you know the the, the 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 difference between the fair value of the existing stake versus let's say the carrying value thereof are going to be the same so the goodwill would only be different because the nci value is different in both the cases there right let's try to do this together okay let's say we're talking about the business combinations achieved in stages so the amount paid, so let's put it like this, the purchase consideration let's look at these uh, approaches, so one is fair value and the other one is proportion of assets, okay. My purchase consideration for the additional stake is provided it is 3.8 crores, okay? That would remain the same in both the scenarios, okay? Then we are looking at the fair value of existing stake, right? But this is also provided, which is 1.2 crores. This gives us a total of 5 crores, which is the fair value of the you know investments in total of 80%. Okay. Of course, we look into it. What is the fair value of the net assets that this acquiry has got on this date, right? Now we have provided that, that the fair value of White Limited's net identifiable asset is 2.4 crores, right? So that would be a straightforward exercise again. We are looking at two point four crores, okay? Essentially, all we are left with is the calculation of NCI in both the cases. And the NCI's fair value is given any which ways, which is 1.2 crores, which means that as far as the fair value 
method is concerned, I can plug in this value straight away. But for the other category, where we look at the calculation of NCI as a proportion of net assets, we are talking about, of course, the 20% of 2.4 crores, which is, of course, 48 lakh. Okay, that gives us 1.96 crores as a part of this calculation, right? And as far as this value is concerned, this becomes 1.20 crores, okay? Is there anything else that we should be looking at? At least from the goodwill calculation purposes, we don't need anything else. Now, the whole idea is that when you look at this respective calculation, you're paying five crores for something worth 1.2 crores, which means that the goodwill in the first scenario is measured at 3.8 crores. And in the second scenario, we can simply argue that this is 3.04 crores as far as the measurement of goodwill under the preparation or the, pro uh, the proportion of net assets is concerned. Right? Straightforward one. Of course, the question is not asking us how to deal with, for example, the difference between the fair value and the carrying value of the net assets. It's not even talking about, for example, how do you deal with the difference between the book value and the fair value of the investments, although it is the same because it has just been, you know, uh, remeasured on the last reporting date, which was just a day before the date of acquisition. So there's not much change, but there's no change for that matter, which is expected. There's no need to even worry about this uh, premium of 20 lakh rupees, because that is not the expectation from the questions requirements perspective. All right. So this is what we have got 3.80 crores under the fair value method. That's a full goodwill, right? And 3.04 crores under the proportionate of uh, proportion of net assets method, which is the partial goodwill calculation, right? Let's have a look at the formal solution. We are saying that this is what we have got, the two values, which are, let's say 3.8 and 3.08 crores. Let me go back to the numbers. If you've got the right numbers there for us, so it's 3.04 here. Let's see if you got it right there. Yeah, that's what we wrong. wrong. It is 48 lakhs, this is 1.92 and thereby this is 3.08, okay? And that's what we have got the answer. Under India's 103, the following approach would be followed. Remeasure the investments to the fair value, which is 1.2 crores. That's what we have already done. The fair value of the net identifiable assets would be taken into consideration for measurement of goodwill, for the measurement of goodwill. The total cost of acquisition would be five crore rupees, which is, what do you pay for the controlling stake plus the fair value of the existing stake? And the goodwill is calculated using either the fair value method or, of course, the proportion of net assets method, right? So the amounts are calculated. Of course, it matches with our solution as well.